coming up next on Small Town Big Deal. From two million pounds of ice cold Christmas to a warm and fuzzy holiday classic. It's a hard body bear. We'll bear witness as the past comes alive. Is there room at the end? We have no more room at the end. How did I know you were going to say that? Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. And we are in Shelburne, Vermont, population about 8,000. And what brought us here is a true rags to riches story. <laughs> well, Jan, if you might bear with me, I think it's more of a rags to stitches story. Shelburne, Vermont is about 10 miles south of Burlington on the western edge of the state. For the people who call this small community home, that colorful building below might just be the town's <laughs> den. This is the Vermont Teddy Bear Company, and they've been a part of Shelburne since 1995. And there's no better time than Christmas to ponder one of the most iconic gifts, the teddy bear. Today, Vermont Teddy Bear is one of the country's leading manufacturers of teddy bears, despite very humble beginnings. The company was started in 1981 by John Sortino, who noticed that all the toys that his son had, who was a baby at that time, were imported. He knew that the teddy bear originated in the USA and felt that teddy bears should be made in the US. So he started figuring out how to make a pattern and making his own right in his, in his house originally. The teddy bear itself dates back to a day in 1902 when President Teddy Roosevelt was on a hunting trip. It wasn't going well, and he was ready to call it quits. But his crew wanted him to have a bear, so they found a cub and they tied it to a tree for him to shoot, and he would have none of that. So he spared the bear. The incident inspired this cartoon from the Washington Post. Soon after, Teddy Bear became a household name. And the rest, as they say, is history. So we follow a path of paw prints into Vermont Teddy Bear, to learn the bare bones of teddy bear making long before any of them land under the Christmas tree. Each year, thousands journey from around the globe to see how teddies are made with the right stuff. Is that one bear? Oh, so that, yes, that makes a bear. That's one of our 15 inch classic bear patterns. We begin at the cutting station with die cutter Larry Rushford. Yep, and they're ready to go. So now what you can do, hold it right down. Perfect, and then move it aside. That big machine makes the cutest little teddy bear parts. So, and then what are these? These are the legs. Oh, oh your legs. Bear. I thought maybe that was the bottom. Actually, Jan, they start to look like bear legs in the sewing area. So we're going to start sewing them together, and the first step is to sew the leg, which is the part you have right now. So we sew the seam, the shape of the leg, and then we sew inside out to start so that the seams won't show on the finished bear. Special tools were designed to quickly and efficiently flip Teddy's parts right side out. One tool takes the phrase turning heads to a whole new level. Oh, you know what? This is like a Rodney bear with the blue eyes and the gray hair. <laughs> Isn't hey, it? Hey, at least I got hair. The parts are assembled together and are ready for stuffing. Now Teddy's come in all different sizes. How about a bear hug from this guy? They have an opening in their back. Okay. Now take your hose, shove it in. You start with their feet. Pam is pretty brave, and she lets us try. And I get to tell Rodney to stuff it. He's got plenty. This is a hard body bear. So now it's Jan's turn. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, jeez. He's lumpy. Is that enough, you think? Oh yeah, he's enough. Not only is that hose good for stuffing bears, it's good for getting the producer's attention. <laughs> they do jump. <laughs> Once they're stuffed, they're ready to find homes. But none of these bears would be possible without Cassandra Clayton. She is a teddy bear designer. 
where do the ideas come from? I'm constantly looking for inspiration, whether it's something I see in a store or genuine research, looking at what's happening at Christmas time. You guys do a very special limited edition. Is it always an angel? No, each year we do a different theme. We only do 50 of them, and it's a limited edition run. So there are a lot of people out there collecting. We have a lot of passionate people who follow us and who love our product. But sometimes accidents do happen. Nancy Robert, who's known around here as Dr. Nancy, nurses injured teddy bears back to health one stitch at a time inside Vermont Teddy Bears Hospital. We've got a lifetime guarantee for our bears. No matter what happens? You buy a bear once and you have it for life. Even if I run over it with a lawnmower? Even if you run over it with a lawnmower. They don't need to pay for the doctor? No. It's free medical care? Free medical care. Wow, well you don't hear that every day. <laughs> And if you're still convinced that teddy bears are just fabric, thread, and stuffing, well, you might want to think again. Do you ever wonder what happens around here at night when all the <laughs> people leave? And anything could happen, right? They're very lifelike, and sometimes we do find things in different places in the morning. You kind of wonder what happened. Nighttime may be a mystery at Vermont Teddy Bear, but come Christmas morning, hugs and smiles are a virtual guarantee for anyone who finds a teddy bear under their tree. Up next, we're turning up some Christmas heat. That was awesome! Small Town Big Deal will be right back. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We're going to Grapevine, Texas. Population about 50,000. It's about 20 miles outside of Dallas. And it's the official Christmas capital of Texas. And it's big. And it's getting bigger. They don't just deck the halls in downtown Grapevine, they deck out everything. More than two million lights twinkle along Grapevine's two mile long historic district. This is proof, everything's bigger in Texas. 25 foot tall Santa boots, towering toy soldiers, colossal Christmas trees. It is a bigger than life celebration everywhere you look. Cross the snowman was a jolly happy soul. You know, one of the things I love about Christmas is snow and ice and bundling up. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Jack, you're in luck because Grapevine has brought a little bit of the North Pole here. Okay. So get ready to be cold. It's the Gaylord Texans exhibit called Ice, featuring two million pounds of hand-carved ice sculptures. In keeping with the theme, Santa Claus is coming to town, the creations are based on the beloved 1970 Christmas TV special and all of it is kept frozen at a bone-chilling nine degrees. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a cold blast. Yeah. <laughs> this is really cool. Oh, look at all the Santas. <laughs> wow, the attention to detail is awesome. And how is this for capturing the true spirit of Christmas? All these amazing ice sculptures are the work of 40 artisans from Harbin in China. It's the home of a renowned snow and ice festival that features these eye-popping creations. The artisans even freeze their own ice. The first thing they do is we rent an ice plant in a little town nearby. We truck over the 5,000 blocks of ice, and then you'll see it transform within 30 days when they're carving to this detailed, beautiful chiseling at the end. It's amazing to watch them do it. Woo! I'm writing to the American bobsled team. The carvers even created these two-story ice slides that literally chilled us to the bone. <laughs> okay, so Rodney may be king of the ice slides, but let's see what happens at our next stop. A 12-lane tubing hill made with two tons of real Texas snow. Ready? Okay. Here we go. I've already moved on to my next conquest. The Gaylord Texans tricked out snowball throwing station. So close. Ah, uh, your very own frozen field yeah. of dreams. A sidewinder now. You know what they say, Jan? If you build it, they will come. Nice. Long before it was the Christmas capital, Grapevine's agricultural heritage earned it a spot on the National Register of Historic Places. Then civic leaders like Sharon Spencer began to think big. And we mean Christmas big, as the town's resident, Mrs. Claus, 
This was serious business for Sharon. You don't just call it the Capitol. It, you, it's official. Oh, we're the real deal. <laughs> the Senate, the state Senate in the state of Texas designated Grapevine as the Christmas Capitol of Texas in 2009. And they've got the bona fide declaration under glass and on display to prove it. What other city in America has their councilwoman dressed up as Mrs. Claus? This is something that I truly, truly love doing. Oh, uh, you can tell. Yeah, you can tell you're very passionate. In fact, it seems everyone in Grapevine is passionate about Christmas. We're gonna make the glass, we actually get to make glass-blown Christmas ornaments. Well, with a little help from the experts here at Vetro Studio. First, they're going to show us how to inflate molten glass. This is colored glass. Now we're going to go just like science class, and we're going to blow some stuff up. <laughs> OK, Ready? let's go do it. So you're blowing air into it to expand it. It's smoking. Is it supposed to be smoking? OK, just check it. Oh my gosh, is that yours? Yeah. That's beautiful. I thought we both did pretty good for the first time making a Christmas ornament. <laughs> and now that we made something special for the tree, how about a little music to wrap up our visit to the Christmas capital of Texas? We asked country singer Penny Gilly, who lives right here in Grapevine, for a few tips on the tradition of Christmas caroling. It's not a matter of being on key, off key, you know, whatever. It's You're all never about off key. It. Don't don't yeah. say that. Please. We just have a good time. I mean, that's what it's all about. We've decided caroling's good for the soul, right? Absolutely. Do you think we can grab some people and try it out on Main Street? Sure. Let's do yeah. it. Heart and soul. Let's go get them. Let's get it. Let's yeah. try it. Why all not? Right. Let's try. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Next up, we're going to travel back in time to Bethlehem for an experience you won't soon forget. We have no more room at the end. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know the nativity scene from the New Testament holds a very special memory for me in my childhood, growing up, celebrating Christmas. It's a reminder that the birth of Christ is the real meaning of Christmas. We found a place that has taken the little town of Bethlehem and supersized it, including the nativity scene, <laughs> bringing it to life in a beautiful way. I love when we can do stories that have the power to inspire. And we found one in Redwood City, California. Hail Caesar! Shalom, shalom, welcome, welcome. What makes this event so magical is the people of Redwood City, just south of San Francisco, deciding to celebrate what they have in common rather than their differences. Oh, and not just people, but some special furry and feathered characters pitch in too. How did this all begin in the first place? A nine-year-old boy asked his dad, after coming to a Christmas scenes in Redwood City, you know, do you think people would come to a drive through nativity? And so his dad called me up, said, hey, Jeff, can you get me some sheep and a donkey and a camel? It took us a few years before we found somebody who had camels. This fur is so soft. It's soft. I thought maybe it would be more wiry. My photo bombing a camel selfie <laughs> wasn't on my bucket list. It's hey. getting dressed is a lot of work. As the sun sets, local citizens join the animals and are transformed into actors, artisans, and angels. I don't think they wore lip gloss. And it starts at the top. And I have all my wise guys in this corner. I'm the three wise men are played by none other than the mayor, the police chief, and the fire chief. What does it mean to you personally to be a part of this? As the community comes together in such a great event, really celebrating peace on earth. And just the feeling of inclusiveness and just one moment in time that they're all together. It just celebrates something as special as Christmas is something that's just beautiful for our city. 
For 24 years now, this amazing pageantry has been coordinated by Paula Dresden. To say it's a monumental effort, we begin planning actually in June. I want to show the context within the Messiah was born. He was born into a Jewish family in a Jewish community. We have a lot of Jews who come to visit Bethlehem and I'm very happy about that because I feel that Judaism is the foundation of Christianity. Everything hits your senses at once. We have music and dancing and synagogue going, marketplace, census takers. Kids are like, can't believe it. They roam around, look at everything. We couldn't wait to be a real part of this night. So with our costumes on, we traveled back over 2,000 years, right into Bethlehem AD. What is that? Oh, it's warm. Fresh pita bread. Pita oh, bread? Oh boy, fresh from the oven. What do we have here? Fresh pita bread, sir. Please take as much as you like. Those Roman soldiers were a bit scary. Hell, she's up. We loved how into character everybody was especially this one young shopkeeper who was not happy that Roman soldiers helped themselves to his goods. I think he's a disgruntled taxpayer. I'm tired of you. The Romans, can you believe that you want to keep your litter? My friends, welcome to Bethlehem. Now, we're just curious, is there room at the end? Oh, my friends, I apologize. We have no more room at the end. You know, how did I know you were going to say that? When they reach the manger, and they see Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. They can't move. They just literally cannot move. They're transfixed. How has this impacted the community here? We've seen gang members come through and bow their head and put their hats down. We feel the spirit of God moves over this whole community. Feel like you're part of Bethlehem. I would imagine this is how it was when, you know, in the days of Jesus. This is a real blessing to have something like this going on in our world today. And to reflect on that blessing, we turn to renowned author and leadership expert John Maxwell to talk a bit about what the Christmas story means today. Well, I think it's the gift. I mean, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his son. And I think that's what makes the Christmas story so incredible, that the creator of the heavens and earth would come down be born in a stable just to connect with us and be our teacher and be our savior. Now, what's beautiful is he identifies with me as an individual, as he does every person. In fact, I think what makes God so amazing is he connects with the person, but he loves everyone unconditionally. He excludes no one, but he includes everyone. Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Wow, what a beautiful reminder of the real reason of Christmas. It's all about the birth of Christ. And I love the fact that the three wise men were played by the mayor, the police chief, and the fire chief. Yeah, and they really enjoyed doing it, too. <laughs> they did. I want to know, your granddaughter Lily, did she like her teddy bear? Yeah, she sure does. <laughs> oh, good. And Grapevine, Texas, what does it prove? They really do things bigger in Texas. They do. <laughs> Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Oh, so close. That was, was not only that far that away. That was awful. <laughs> Small town, big deal. Okay, you know, I think you should do the regular voice. <laughs>